Hey guys, Dr. Andre Pines at the Parent Productivity Expert, and tonight I'm answering this question I keep getting from you guys about international medical schools and should I go and Elam and Caribbean medical schools and all these domestic or all these foreign medical schools. So tonight I'm presenting four reasons why you shouldn't go to international medical schools. Reason number one: you're not ready for medical school. Mm -hmm. Just because you get accepted to a school does not mean you're actually ready to go. Foreign medical schools have lower entry requirements, and sometimes they can be too low. And what they're trying to do for some of these schools, not all these schools, is <laughs> they want to get that tuition money. So they don't care if you do well once you're there. They don't care if you get a residency. All they care about is you come there and you pay them expensive tuition. And foreign medical schools are more expensive a lot of times than domestic medical schools. So they want to get there and suck that tuition out of you. So you may go to a medical school and not be prepared to survive and to thrive and do well in medical school. And it could be either from an academic perspective, so maybe you don't have your study skills on point, maybe you're not ready to succeed in medical school at that point. The other thing is that from an emotional and a mature standpoint, medical school, you guys think undergrad is hard. Undergrad is not hard, right? It's hard. Medical school blows undergrad away. Once you get through medical school, you're gonna be like, I can't believe I ever worried about college. It's like right now, right? You're in college and you're like, why was I worried in junior high about that stupid science project? Like that was so difficult. You recognize at every level that it gets extremely hard. And so medical school is harder than anything you can imagine. And so you're going to have days where you feel terrible. You're going to have months where nothing goes right and you're constantly being evaluated. So you really just feel all that pressure. If you're not emotionally mature enough to handle that, to stay centered and keep going, you're not going to do well. And so you could maybe benefit from not getting in and taking a couple of years and improving yourself both in the classroom and also from a mental standpoint. So think about that. The other thing is if you go to one of these schools, right, and you're not ready and you don't finish, which people think, oh, I'm in the medical school, I'm going to be a doctor. No, there's plenty of people who don't go through and finish medical school. The number is higher in terms of international medical students who don't finish. So keep that in mind, guys. And at the end, right, if you don't finish, what do you still have to do? Pay back all that MD medical school debt without the medical school degree. So how else do you pay it back? Pretty hard. And so it's a really, really tough spot. So that's rule number one is if you are not actually ready for medical school, you don't want to go to international medical school. The second thing is, if you are not and don't have a plan to become a good test taker, a big criteria point for getting into American medical schools is the MCAT. Some international medical schools don't even require the MCAT, and the other ones that do, they tend to take extremely low MCAT scores. You may think it's not a big deal and the MCAT should not determine whether you get into a medical school or not. Fine. The truth of the matter is the MCAT matters and it should matter because every single rung you move through in your medical education, you have to take a high stakes test. Step one licensing exam, step two licensing exam, step three licensing exam. You're in training exams and residency. You have to do your licensure when you finally finish your residency. Then you have to recertify every couple of years. So you're constantly taking tests. If you can't pass tests now, you're not gonna do well on the step one, step two, step three, right? So if you perform on the MCAT, odds are you're not gonna do well on those later exams. It's just the numbers, guys. I'm just telling you how it is. It correlates, whatever the reason might be. Coming from an international medical school is much harder to get a residency. Therefore, your STEP exam board scores have to be extremely high and competitive in order to get good American residencies. Therefore, if you have a poor MCAT, right, and the odds are you're gonna have a poor STEP one or STEP two, the odds of you getting a really good residency coming out of international medical school are low. So you either have to become a good test taker before you go or while you're in medical school, you, before you decide to go to international medical school, have a plan for how you're gonna become a good studier and a good test taker. I mean, step one should be obviously enrolling in my <laughs> how to study less and get better grades course on my website right now. But if you're not gonna do that, at least read a book, do something, but improve yourself as a student. That way you can do well on those tests because all those board exams function just like the MCAT, but for residency. And residencies are super, super competitive. So if you're coming, it's competitive even if you're coming from an American school. So you're going for an international school, it's really hard if your step one, step two test scores are not amazing. So that's reason number two. 
Reason number three is if you got into a medical school that's in the middle of nowhere or if you got into a DO school. So some of you may think, oh, you know what? I don't want to go to that DO school. I want an MD, so I'm going to go to the international school. Wrong. Terrible decision. Oh, I'm going to not go to that school in Kentucky because I'm from California. I'd rather go to live on the beach out in the Caribbean. Wrong. Terrible decision. It is so much harder, guys, to go from an international medical school to an American residency. It's not close. It's way more difficult. You know what I mean? You may think that whatever you know, rinky-dink medical school in the middle of nowhere in America or whatever DO school is not as good as that international school because you've heard they place residents. They don't place residents, guys. It's, it's the facts bear it out. They don't place residents in America as well as any American medical school. That's the facts. So don't think you're putting yourself in a better position to be down there on to be chilling on the beach, living the life as opposed to being in the middle of nowhere. Well, let me tell you two things. One, again, you're not going to do well in your residency, getting your residency you want. And the second thing is you're going to be so busy studying, you're not going to have time to really enjoy that beach anyway. So don't put yourself through that. You know what I mean? I know plenty of people from DO schools or lower tier medical schools in America who've gotten great residencies in California at Ivy League schools. I know zero. I know actually that's not true. I lie. I know one woman who came from an international medical school and got a California high competitive specialty residency. How did she do it? Well, she busted her butt. She did what I said earlier. She became a great test taker. She killed her step one and step two exams. She also was extremely proactive and made contacts with the residency program directors at the places she wanted to be in. But I will say this, even in her case, right? She's in a great California, very competitive specialty residency. Even with that, she told me she got no other interviews in that specialty in the entire US. Could not get a single other interview other than that one that she made contacts at. So what does that tell you? And she was amazing, step one, step two. So it's gonna be hard to get there. You're much better off going to MD or DO school. Reason number four is if you don't wanna go into primary care. I've already said it's hard to get residencies. And so let me just take a step back. I keep mentioning how hard it is to get a residency. Everyone thinks that you get into medical school and all the hard work is done. You have to apply to residency just like you do for medical school. And if you imagine, right, life's like a big pyramid and everyone falls off the pyramid. You start, right, everyone's in high school and then people go to college, it narrows. People go to medical school, it gets narrow, right? So it's the cream of the crop at each level. So you imagine medical school people, people who graduate medical school are pretty smart, pretty together, pretty determined, pretty focused. So now you get to medical school and to get to the top specialties, the plastics, the ortho, those specialties, you have to be the top of that top. So you have to be one of the top medical students in the country to get some of these residencies. And some of these residencies, you think medical school is competitive. Medical school has like 100 spots per school on the small side, 200 spots on the big side, 300 spots. There are residency programs like at UCSD where I'm at. Our neurosurgery department has two residents a year. Two for the entire country. How many international medical graduates do you think they've accepted in the history of the program? Zero. Plastics at UCSD. How many international medical medicine graduates? Zero. It's not going to happen. So what you're going to be left with, right, if you go to an international medical school, is primary care. And a lot of you guys fall into this trap and you let international medical schools talk about, oh, yeah, we're very primary care focused. You'll learn about the patients. You'll learn another language. You'll come back and, you know, primary care, primary care, primary care. And you think that sounds great to you because you haven't done the economics of a medical degree. And <laughs> I'm going to do another video about the economics of becoming a doctor. But in short, the average medical student graduates with about $180,000 in debt. The average international medical student graduates with over $200,000 in medical school debt. That debt, if you go to an American school, is at about 6 to 8%. If you go to a foreign school, it can be anywhere from 8 to 12%, even higher. So let's be safe. Let's call it 5%. What's 5% of $200,000? $10,000. Which means every year you will accumulate just an interest ten thousand dollars so every month you generate almost about a thousand dollars in interest that's a lot of money so you figure right <laughs> you've got to pay down all those loans you're gonna have a family you have to pay down right pay for your family all those things can you do that on a primary care special on a primary care specialist salary can you do that as a primary care physician yes you can you can 
but it's much more difficult than doing it on a specialist salary. And I don't say this to say anything about primary care. I think primary care is amazing. If you want to do it, great. Make sure you can afford to do it. Because I couldn't afford to do primary care even if I wanted to do it. I didn't want to do it. But if I wanted to, I still couldn't afford it. Because the loans, my loans are too high. My funds are too short. I don't have financial backing to be able to pay down my loans. So my loans are growing and growing and growing. And I would never make the money back enough to pay it off as a primary care physician. And I'll do a whole video on the economics and you can see what I'm talking about. But if you don't want to do primary care and you get locked into primary care and you can't afford it, that's a problem. The other thing is if you actually don't want to do primary care. So if you're thinking, oh, I'm going to go to international medical school and I'm going to be a plastic surgeon, it's not going to happen, guys. And if you actually look at the statistics, most of the international medical schools, they put people into primary care. That's what they do. That's what they have the options to. And they like to sell it as them focusing on primary care. But the truth is, that's what their residents get. And they don't necessarily, if they do get specialists, specialty positions, they get them in the middle of nowhere at hospitals that don't have the reputation for residency that won't put you in a position to get competitive attending positions, right? Non-academic centers, all those things. So I just really want you guys to think about, if you're thinking about going to international medical school, don't. Don't. This is the honest to goodness facts. And I'll do this in an economics video, but sometimes you're better off just picking another field. And if you are only able to get into international medical schools, I would tell you, unless you come from money, if you come from money, you can make a lot of things happen. If you don't come from money, don't go to international medical school because it will not ever pay you back and you will not have the career opportunities that you think you will have. It is a false pipe dream. So I could be no stronger on this opinion and some of you may comment and rip this video to shreds. The statistics bear it out. And I'm not gonna list stats because that's boring but I'll list one stat to close this video out for you guys. Let me read this stat for you. New medical schools continue to pop up every year and established medical schools are increasing enrollment every year. However, the number of federally funded residencies has remained capped since 1997. That's 19 years ago. So no more, very few <laughs> residency spots have been increased since 1997. However, every year, medical schools are popping up. They're getting bigger. International schools are getting bigger. All these things. So, <laughs> so I want you to think about that because you have to place into one of these competitive spaces. And one of the great quotes that goes with that stat is that Atul Grover, excuse me, Atul Grover, he's a chief public officer for the AAMC, so the American Association of Medical Colleges. This is a big wig public policy guy. So he, when he was asked about the, what he thought of increasing the number of medical schools and the number of medical school spots, he said, it's not a good idea because we don't want to see medical grads facing $200,000 in student loans not able to actually finish their training. Because I mentioned not getting competitive residencies. Every year there's a percentage of medical students who don't even get a residency. So this is, I, I, I can't stress strongly enough, guys. This is one of the heads of AAMC telling you, you might go to medical school and you might not get a residency. And you might literally be out on the street with a medical degree and no job, right? Because you got no formal training. You can't practice. So think about it really, really hard before you go to an international medical school. I never recommend it. Don't do it. If that's your only option, do something else. Change careers. And I'm sorry to be so harsh and so blunt about it, but it's the facts and people can get on here and that's why I, I'm I like having a YouTube channel because I can reach you guys but at the same time there's so much garbage on this YouTube that it makes me sick sometimes I see some people's videos that they post and they have no expertise they don't know what they talk like what they're talking about I talk to deans regularly I talk to admissions people regularly I'm in the know I work with Princeton Review I know how admissions works for medical schools other people don't know what's up and they're on YouTube trying to tell you go to international medical schools Go do it. Get hyped up. And this is actually a personal story for me that a student who I was very close with and who I mentored for a time, without me knowing, applied only to one school this year and applied to an international medical school and, you know, ended up going there. And I was devastated, devastated for that person because they had the potential to be an Ivy League type student, but they were scared. They were scared. They said, you know what? I want to go here. They... They sold that person on the hyped up primary care, learn a second language stuff, right? All that. 
And the truth is that that person could have been at an Ivy League school and in a position to have an amazing medical career. And I don't know if they'll ever make it into a residency and have that opportunity to help people like they were trying to do, to go back to the community and really serve. And so it's very, very unfortunate. But it, it, I cannot say it any stronger. Anyone who tells you anything different is lying to you. And for you guys who see this video and know what's up and know that I speak the truth, I hope that some of you guys will share this so that other people can see the real truths about residencies and about medical school and getting into residencies from international medical schools. I'm going to post uh, this also to my blog. So check out my blog so you can see the actual script of this. Um, so you can see the actual bullet points and see what I'm talking about in the real breakdown. But international medical schools are not the way to go. Don't do it. And if you're a person right now and you're an undergrad, it's early in your undergrad, and you sense that that may be your only trajectory because your grades are so low, it doesn't have to be. Fix it right now, this moment. Contact me. Get over to my website. I have a course. It's nine hours, nine hours of me talking all about studying, breaking down every single aspect of studying, teaching you all the systems that allow me to study better than anybody in the entire world. And facts are facts and everything else ain't. And these are facts. International medical schools, not the way to go. My study course, the absolute way to go. So get it together, guys. Uh, send me, as always, send me emails, comment my email, A-N-D-R-E at premanproductivity.com. If you are going to email me, guys, take the time out. And I, <laughs> I, <laughs> I have a video about this and how you address people. But take the time out. Say hello to me in the email. Take time out. Tell me about yourself. Don't just spew questions at me or, or big, bold statements like, hey, tell me how to study better. What does that mean to me? I don't know what's wrong with your study. I can't. I don't have a whole lot to do there. So send me specific questions if you really want you know, help. But thank you guys again uh, for watching these videos and supporting my channel and seeing through the fluff that's out there to some real stuff. And I just, like I said, I hope you guys share this with people. If you have a friend or if you're considering going to international medical school, do not do it. Watch this video over and over again until you believe me. I'm hypnotizing you. Hypno hypnosis coming at you. No international medical schools. And with that, I'm out. Peace.